Hey everyone, in this video, I want to showcase Retool, which helps you build internal tools remarkably fast. Typically, when working on a project, you build a user-facing application and a supporting admin application that has super user privileges to update data in the backend. What I want to show is how easy it is to do that with Retool by building an admin page that connects to an existing data source. First, head over to retool.com and create an account. Once you sign in, create a new application. Let's name this app Code Evolution. Now, the user interface has a few things that will help build our application. On the right hand side, you have a list of ready to use UI components. At the bottom, we have a panel that helps manage data and API activity. At the center of the screen, we have the canvas where we can build our application. You can toggle the bottom and right panels using the buttons at the top. Now for our admin page, we're going to see how to add a user's table and a bar graph with user's credits as data. Let's begin by adding a heading to our table. Click on the canvas which reveals the components panel. Drag and drop the text component and place it in the canvas. When a component is selected, the right panel changes to showcase the component's properties. Let's change the text to users. Next, we need to create a data table. Retool has a table component which we can drag and drop. Let's change the table name to users underscore table. By default, the table uses static JSON as its data source. When building an admin application though, you already have an existing database that you would want to connect to. Let me show how to do that. In the bottom panel, click on the resource dropdown. If you click create a new resource, you can see all the different types of databases and APIs you can connect to with Retool. You have Postgres, MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, MongoDB, any REST API, GraphQL, Firebase, Stripe, Twilio, etc. Retool allows you to work with all of your data sources seamlessly from one application. For our page though, we are going to use the onboarding database. So click on resource and select onboarding underscore db which is a Postgres database. This is a database that is available for everyone including you. And this plays well with the fact that an admin page uses an existing database. We can now see a panel that shows the list of tables available in the database. Credits, deals, images, orders, organizations, etc. We are going to use the users table. Let's run a query to fetch the user data. The query is select star from users order by ID. Click on save and run. We can now see a preview of the data that has been retrieved. What is worth noting is that your data is always stored by you. When a query is run, the retool backend proxies the request to your backend. No data is stored on retool itself. Let's rename the query to users underscore query. Now to connect this query data with the table we have created, select the table and in the properties panel, 
set data curly braces users underscore query dot data. If I close the bottom panel, you can see the table now automatically updates to reflect the user's table in the database. We have columns like ID, first and last name, email, created and updated at, whether the user is an active user, feature flags, and their trial expiry date. As you can see, in about five minutes, we were able to connect to a data source, query data, and display it in a table format. Now you might ask, how good is this table though? Well, Retool is highly hackable, so you are never limited by what is available out of the box. If you can write it with JavaScript and an API, you can build it in Retool. Let's go over some of the features you would expect when building tables for an internal application. Now, if you don't want a column to be displayed in the table, you can simply hide it by clicking on the eye icon in the properties panel. Let's hide the feature flags column. You can see we don't have the column anymore. You can also add new columns and derive the data from existing columns. For example, let's replace first name and last name columns with a full name column. On the right hand side, next to columns, click on the add button. Set column title to full underscore name. And the value is going to be a bit of JavaScript. In Retool, we can evaluate JavaScript expressions using double curly braces. So we can specify double curly braces, current row, dot first name, followed by double curly braces, current row, dot last name. Current row is the object corresponding to each row which is readily available to us. If we click on the canvas, you can now see the full name column added at the end of the table. Select the table again. And on the table properties panel, drag the full name column to the top. We can now see full name is a concatenation of first name and last name. Since we now have the full name column, we can hide first name and last name by clicking on the eye icon. Now apart from adding and hiding columns, the three most important features for a table are sorting, pagination, and filtering. The great thing about our table is that all of them are available out of the box. Click on a column header to sort by ascending or descending order. ID is a column that is sorting by string, so 1, 10, and 11. On the right hand side, click on the ID column and change the column type to number. If we now click on the canvas, you can see ID is now sorted based on the numeric type, one, two, three, and so on. You can sort by email, full name, or even the updated at field. Pagination controls are also available at the bottom of the table. You can see we are currently showing one to five of 13. Click on the second page, and then the third page. You can also increase the number of rows by simply extending the height of the table. We now see 1 to 6 of 13. For filtering, we have the filter icon to the bottom right. Let's add a filter that email contains the string BE. You can see the table narrows down the data to two rows, Ben and Elizabeth. You can also add multiple filters 
and you control whether both the conditions have to be satisfied or one of them have to be satisfied using the AND or drop down. Finally, you have controls to download the table as a CSV file and refresh the table at any given time. As you can see, the table component is really a robust component in Retool. If you ask me, what would take a few days to implement is given to us in few minutes. When building internal tools, this is exactly what you need. Now, what else would you expect from a table? Well, how about a few action buttons to update a row? Let's see how to do that. Select the table and on the right hand side, scroll down to actions. Click on the add button. This will add a new column called actions at the start of the table. Let's move it to the end using the column position property. Next, let's change the label of action 1 to approve. Let's add another action and change the label to reject. I'm going to hide email and create it at columns to make room for the actions column. Now what we want to do is on click of these buttons, update the active flag column to true or false. To update the table, we need to create two more queries. Open the bottom panel and bottom left, click on new query. Let's rename this to approve underscore query. And the resource will remain onboarding underscore db. But we now enter the GUI mode instead of the SQL mode. The table is going to be users. And the action type is update an existing record. We filter by ID. and set it equal to a JavaScript evaluated expression, which is users table dot selected row dot data dot ID. This will point to the ID of the user row, which contains the approve button. For the change set, we select the active column and set it to boolean true. Finally, click on save query. Now that we have a query, we can use it as the on-click handler for the approve button. I'm going to hide the bottom panel and select the table. Scroll down to actions and click on the approve action an action button type is going to be run a query, which is the default selected value. Now though, the action query itself is going to be approve underscore query. If we now click on the approve button for ID is equal to five and refresh, you see the active flag checked. We can also avoid the manual refresh by adding an on success handler to the API call. So open the bottom panel again, select approve underscore query and scroll down to event handlers. Click on add. This would be a trigger query and we set the query to users underscore query. Make sure to save the update. So anytime approve underscore query is successful, the user's query is rerun, which should refresh our data table. 
So if I now click on approve for ID is equal to two, you can see the active flag is checked automatically. It really is this simple. A feature that would take an entire sprint to implement has been implemented in a matter of minutes. Now, if you're following along, I want you to pause the video and implement the handler for the reject button. All you have to do is update active to false instead of true. Let me know in the comment section if you were able to achieve that. All right, let me also quickly add a chart for data visualization. Click on the canvas and drag and drop the chart component. Let's create a new query to pull some information on what was the revenue over the past few months. So click on new query and select resource query. Rename the query to revenue underscore query. This is once again going to be from the onboarding database and the query is going to be select star from credits table. Click on save and run. Now select the chart component and update the data source to revenue query dot data. The table is now visualized with a bar graph. We have a lot of data sets, but we are only interested in the revenue. Let me hide the others. The X axis should be the month column. We now have the 12 month revenue information. You can hover over each bar to show the X axis value and the Y axis value. If a bar chart is not what you're after, perhaps change it to a line chart. I can also change the graph color with a few clicks. Scroll down a bit and you can also update the layout properties. Add a title, revenue trend, and a y-axis title, revenue in dollars. You can also move the legend position if you wish to. When you're done with development, click on preview to see how your internal user would view the application. Any app can be made publicly shareable in seconds and you can send the link to your users. But more importantly, your product manager will be really happy to see an entire admin page built in such a short amount of time. Now, apart from what we have already seen, there are other handy features that make development all the more easier with Retool. For example, you can add custom components. If you can build it in React, you can use it in Retool. You can import JavaScript libraries via a URL and use them anywhere. Retool ships with Lodash, Moment, and Numro already installed. On the left-hand panel, which we haven't seen yet, you can view all the available queries, components, and environment properties, as well as query dependencies to help quickly debug any issues you might have. Finally, you can host Retool on-premises behind your own VPN and in your own VPC. My idea with this tool was to introduce you to a new way of building internal tools really fast. You can pitch Retool at work or even use it for your next side project. Head over to retool.com to get started. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.